Hey, howdy, hey. We're back. Okay, we are going to podcast this time on a few more key terms dealing with um, inheritance and genetics. Okay. So last time I said we would have another podcast on homologous chromosomes. We're going to go over a few more key terms here. Okay. The first term is karyotype. Karyotype basically means all of the chromosomes of an individual. We can actually process the chromosomes of like a human per se, and we can look at their karyotype. We can kind of look at almost like uh, a storybook of how many chromosomes they have and the banding patterns on them and so on and so forth. With humans, we have 23 pair of chromosomes. 23 pair of homologous chromosomes. We'll talk about that word in a second. We've talked about that plenty in class. 23 pair. You have 22 what we call autosomes. 22 pair of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. And when we talk about the sex chromosomes, it's basically they are X and Y. Okay, so you have 22 pair of autosomes. Now the way I talk about this, all right, with the homologous chromosomes is when we talk about pair, well, what is a pair? What does it mean to have a pair of something? And so I have students look at their shoes. Look at your shoes. They are basically identical copies of each other. Now, of course, one is left and one is right. All right? So they do have some subtle differences. That's fine. I have two hands. They're basically homologous to each other. Okay? They look just like each other. They have the same bone structure. They have the same nail structure, pretty much. They do have subtle differences. All right? And they are mirror images of each other. Homologous chromosomes are roughly the same thing. Okay? So when we say we have 23 pair, what we mean is we have one pair of number one chromosomes, number two chromosomes, number three, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the sex chromosomes. And then you have a pair of sex chromosomes. So this is basically like saying, chromosome number one, I have two copies of chromosome number one. I have two copies of chromosome number two. I have two copies of chromosome number three. Do you get the point? all the way up to number 22, and then I have two copies or two sex chromosomes. Now we ask ourselves once more, why do I have pairs of chromosomes? Well, we've talked about this plenty. We have pairs because mom's egg, okay, and dad's sperm came along and they fertilized, and each one of those sex cells carried a complete set of chromosomes. They carried 23 chromosomes each. So mom's sex cell carried 23 chromosomes. Dad's sex cell carried 23 chromosomes. And when those two combined and fertilized, it made a little organism with 46. So we have pairs of chromosomes. So mom brought a complete set of chromosomes, 1 through 23. Dad's sex cell brought a complete set of chromosomes, 1 through 23. So literally we could say this number one chromosome came from mom and this one came from dad. And this one came from mom, and this one came from dad. And this one came from mom, and this one came from dad. Now, mom and dad are different, correct? It's the combination of all of their basically genes and traits that make them different. So let's pretend that, like we talked about pea plants, where peas have two different colors of flower, they have purple or white. Let's talk about a human. Let's talk about a really, really simple trait. Okay? Really simple trait. Widow's peak. I don't have one. The little V that can come down in some people's hair or they have a straight hairline. Okay? Let's pretend that mom has a widow's peak. Okay? Dad does not. And so really, think about it. Their child has the probability of having a widow's peak or maybe they have a probability of not. Okay? So let's say this is you. 
all right, let's say you do or you don't have a widow's peak, whatever. You have two copies of chromosome number one. So you've got a gene for a widow's peak from mom and a gene for a widow's peak from dad. So you basically have on one of your chromosomes somewhere, there's a gene for a widow's peak. So let's say mom gave you a copy of that and dad gave you a copy of that. Okay, let's use W for widow's peak. Let's say that mom gave you a big W allele for widow's peak and dad gave you a little W allele for widow's peak. So your combined genotype is big W, little w for genotype on that chromosome where the gene for widow's peak is carried. And that's why when we do genetics, we always say we have maybe two alleles for each gene. Yeah, you have two copies because of the homologous chromosomes that came from mom and came from dad. You have two copies of each gene. Each gene is identical to each other like, it's sho sh like your shoes or like your hands. And so each gene will carry one copy of every gene in your body. And so you really have two copies of every gene that you have in your body, in your cells. Hopefully that makes sense. When we talk homologous chromosomes, we mean 1 through 22 plus the sex cells. And there can be genes linked to the sex cells, just like there are genes linked to all of your other chromosomes. So the alleles, basically, the reason we say we have multiple alleles, if I have a gene for, like, widow's peak, here I have two possible alleles. I either have it or I do not. So we have two alleles for widow's peak found on a certain chromosome. Okay? The different letters represent the alleles. The gene, that's the coding region on the DNA, the chromosome, that actually code for whether you produce hair right there or you don't. Okay? The expression of the trait is, what trait do I express? Do I have widow's peak? If I do, I'm expressing that genotype that I have inside of me for widow's peak. If I don't express widow peak, I'm expressing the lack of that gene. All right? Hopefully that makes sense when we talk about alleles, chromosomes, why we have pairs of chromosomes, where they came from, how we have basically two copies of every gene, how we can have multiple basically alleles or combinations of that gene, so I can have different types of that gene. Okay? I can have widow's peak, I can. I can have attached air lobes, I can. I can have blue eyes or I can have brown. How do those genes interact? The different combinations of the letters or the alleles. How do they interact? What trait do I show? Alright? Hopefully that helps you. Later.